It's Elk Week here at Born and Raised. Oh, yeah! We got new videos dropping every single day, 4 p.m. We've got calling, we've got gear dumps, shot angles, do's and don'ts of elk hunting, and the best elk hunting video, 20 kills in 20 minutes. <laughs> Can you believe that? Insane giveaways. If you missed a video, go check out the Elk Week playlist and get caught up. Make sure you're entered for all the giveaways. We've got tons of gear. We're announcing the winner every single day. This is why we came to Wyoming, buddy. <laughs>Alright guys, it is Elk Week here at the Born and Raised channel. It's like Shark Week, but better, right? Way better. Way better. Way better. If you're not getting fired up for elk, it's what, it, 10 weeks? 8 weeks? 10 weeks? 9 weeks? 6. 7 and a half weeks? Wow. 5. 4 weeks Somewhere out. in there, somewhere. Not a big math guy. <laughs> not huge on math. No, no, I'm not a big numbers guy. Not a big numbers guy. So we're it's here. It's not that far out. Just uh, trying to go through the whole gambit. Tonight we got calling, tomorrow we got gear, Wednesday we got the shot angles, do's and don'ts, and then on the final day of Elk Week. Don't tell them. Okay. Surprise. Surprise. Surprise! <laughs> Oh my oh. God! It's one that you're not gonna want to miss. Uh, before we jump into like what we're gonna go through tonight on elk calling, uh, we got a couple things we want to talk about. First things first, we're doing giveaways every single day. Tonight's video, we're gonna pick the winner tomorrow and air it on uh, the day two video, and that's all gear dump. But text the word Elk Week to five four one two five six two four five seven Elk Week. And uh, we're gonna pick a winner. We'll let you guys know tomorrow. You're gonna walk away with a whole Born and Raised Calco package, bugle tube, sound bite, two tone, all seven of our reeds, and a set of meat bags. So, ooh, tell them what they've won. Oh, <laughs> they didn't win anything. No, they didn't yet. win anything. You didn't win anything yet. <laughs> uh, we just came to market with two new calls. We added to our lineup, so we have seven mouth calls in our lineup on the arc frame. This is the OTC. This is the one that just came out. And this is kind of that do-it-all utility player. You got a uh, OTC tag. This is the one. It'll do it all. Cow calls to bugles, the whole gambit. You've been calling it the do-it-all. I like kind it. Of in Nick, yeah. I like it, the do-it-all. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, easy cow. So this is a call that honestly anybody, I will bet that you can't not blow it. How about that? Wow. I like it. Dude, I'm not kidding you. It was yeah. like from the first time, it's just simple, simple, simple. Yeah, if, simple. If you're learning, if you're kind of at the beginner stages of calling, it's 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 Good the call first for you. Call. Oh, yeah. it's a great first read. It's awesome. Yeah. Great it's first read. Huge lineup for us. The last thing we want to talk about, Trevor, our model, Hollywood, H-Dub, is rocking it. Rock and I'm shocked he doesn't have his sunglasses on. Oh, guys. Oh, yeah. Oh, there it is. T-shirt nice. of the month. So we've started a teacher of the month subscription. Uh, done in what, two months now? Yep, second month. This is month number two. Month number two, it'll be an individual. It will not be sold on our website. It's just, uh, if you want to sign up for it, we really, really appreciate it. Cool thing about the monthly t-shirt club, for every month you're entered, you get a chance to win a blacktail hunt here in Oregon in October of 2023. So uh, if you are if you signed up last month, you got two entries now. You're, Sure to the club nice. month too. So we hope to pick you as a winner to come out and blacktail hunt with us. Pretty exciting. I can't wait for that. Yeah. So be fun. enough about that. Let's talk about calling elk and how to sound like a real elk. How to sound like a real elk. So guys, let's talk about how to blow a, a mouth reed and make just a simple cow call, okay? So once you get it in the roof of your mouth, um, don't get it all the way at the back of your mouth. Get it kind of centered up or maybe even forward just a little bit. And you're gonna have your tongue press pressure against this tape here. Press pressure, okay? So to make that higher pitch, a little more pressure to get that lower pitch at the end where it tails off you let it down it's all just about putting a little bit more tongue pressure and you want to blow from your diaphragm you don't want to be blowing air out like you're blowing out candles 
if I had a candle in front of my mouth right now, it would not go out because I'm using my diaphragm to make that sound. I'm not, you're not doing that. So hope this helps guys. Okay, so uh, in the external category, you're gonna have two different kinds from our call line and this will cover everything that you're gonna need in the external cow calls. That is our sound bite. So it's all acrylic. It is awesome because a lot of cow calls, sorry, Steven, but no, you're good. a lot of cow calls, what you're gonna see in a lot of cow calls and look at them, it's gonna have all the sound coming off the tone plate. These are different. These are built on a whole different system to where they actually come out the end, the sound does. It doesn't come off the plate. So we've taken the technology that we've learned from the waterfowl industry and turned it into the elk industry so we can get those louder noises and they'll project a lot further. So that's all acrylic. That's, that, that's just kind of the meat and potatoes yep. on the sound bite. The two-tone is a little different. It's aluminum and acrylic. And it has this cool thing where it comes off of itself. So it comes out and this was made for like putting in a bugle tube for really loud, loud calls or put it back in the aluminum sleeve and it gives you a whole different sound altogether. Two different ways to use these. Some people use their teeth, some people use their lips. It's a good call. Um, I use my teeth more than my lips, but- And I use just, my lips. Yep, you have yours this way, I have mine that way. Yeah. It does, I guess it's just each personal preference. To each Whatever works, yeah, whatever works for each individual, so. I mean, that's... Yeah, we'll describe some stuff and kind of show you just a roundabout version of the soundbite. Go ahead. That's going to be more of a cow call, which is starting, <clears throat> for me, I start midway. Uh, I push down with my teeth, blow air, and push forward. That will give more of a cow, cow sound. And then for a calf sound, I will be further back on the reed. which gives a higher pitch. And these come with a band too. They'll have a band here so where you can just block off the noise from one point. I don't like the band personally. No, I take the bands off. I take please. the bands off just so I can use the whole reed so yep. I can actually do like the sound that Steve just did, the like a mature cow versus a calf. Yep. Sound. So go ahead and wrap and just do a bunch of different sounds there. So that's just a bunch of different cow sounds that you can that you can produce with the sound bite. The cool thing about the two tone is that you can do both the cow sounds and like Steve said, I'm doing it a different I I hold it different. So I hold it just on my lip right here and then I work the reed. So I can actually just kind of change the tone by the the my lower lip on the reed. The cool thing about this is it has a different tone to it, so it pings off the aluminum. Yes. It has a, a lot different sound. And as you'll see later on in the video, like when Strand called your bull in last with, year. With the two-tone. With the two-tone, it was that whole different, it just had a, it just had the realistic, really, yeah. really good sound. It, it was very loud too, which was, the sound was traveling a long ways. So then you can put it in the tube and you can like get that huge projection. So that's the sound bite and the two tone. I mean, the only two, honestly, external calls that you'll ever need. All right, so I just want to kind of run through the use of a bugle tube and a mouth call and that combination. So Trevor kind of talked through how to make cow sounds. Trent and Steve were going through the external. This segment is going to talk about the bugle and kind of the just starting points for a bugle sound, how to get it. Same concept to making a cow call, but it's basically a lengthier and elongated. You're going to start pressure with a bugle, you know, depending, you'll start a little bit lower pressure, bring your tongue pressure up high, it's gonna create the higher pitch. 
break it down off the back end and you'll let out. So it's basically an exaggerated cow call, a longer version of it. So initial sound out of it. You wanna just get the buzz of the reed, and then bring that tongue pressure up, increase the air pressure, drop that air pressure off to the end of the bugle tube. So that's just the basic bugle to get yourself uh, in the woods. We're gonna do a little bit further breakdown on variants of bugles, lip ball, chuckles, and the whole works. Okay guys, now that we showed you kind of the basics of how to make a bugle, there's a bunch of different bugles in different scenarios that are helpful um, to try to get that bull to close that last 100 yards. So we're gonna go through a few of those tips and techniques in different situations, and we're gonna throw it back to some, some other real situations that we've had in the past to help you kind of see what we were experiencing and why we used it, so. So the hardest part with calling elk is just finding them. Honestly, just getting that first locate bugle. We used to have the theory that it was all about hitting the high note. Over the years, we've kind of found that a two-tone note, almost a lower, think of like a train horn or a car horn sound versus a, a high-pitch whistle. The train noise carries a long ways away. For a location bugle, we'll, we'll call it the two-tone, and you'll start out as a lower pitch and break one octave. You don't need to get the, voily, the gravelly voice or anything like that. You're just trying to project the sound as loud and travel as far as you can just to try to penetrate the woods and get a response. We call it the two-tone because it's literally two notes. And I'm gonna be honest with you, this is one of the hardest bugles to do, to learn out of the gate. And so there's a couple techniques that have helped me hit those notes uh, consistently. One of the things that I think really helpful is you want to create a big cavity to get that note, um, to hit that lower note. And to do that, what we do is we push our lower jaw forward and it opens up that space in your mouth and it creates opportunity to hit that lower note. So you'll see me press it here. And then I'll kick my lower jaw, I'll kick my lower jaw forward like this. And then I'll try to hit just the two notes. Did you hear the difference how I kind of went up? and then I just hit those two. You don't have to just hit the two, um, but if you wanna really hit it consistently, keep practicing and practicing. The key is actually less pressure is better than more pressure for this specific bugle. So to hit the high note, you wanna have lots of pressure. To hit that low note, you wanna have your tongue so it almost doesn't, it barely yeah, touches just, well, this yeah. reed. And that's the hard part and the tricky part is it, it'll wanna flutter if, as you get into that and you're starting to try to get that lower note, it'll flutter back and forth and trying to hold that low consistent note is the, the hardest part. It's tough, but it can be done. You just have to practice. So try that when you're trying the two-tone note to reach way out down that canyon and get that bull to, to kick off. That's a good bull. Don't hit me, Trevor, please. Okay, let's let him go. 
Trevor talked about, the biggest thing with that note, this is for us just to cover the ground, doing the cat road shuffle, using this sound to locate. Um, this is our new location bugle. Yeah, it's not something that we use once we have a bull going and back and forth. This is strictly to get a response out of it. All right, so the next sound that we're talking in a bugle, we've talked about the location bugle, is gonna be a lit ball. And it, it's a sound that I know it took me a long time to figure out, and then once you figure it out, you're like, gosh, that's really, that's it? That's pretty easy. And it's all of a sudden, is, as you're bugling, you're gonna purse your lips together and bring those lips together and make a vibration. So without a call in your mouth, Simple as that, and it, you get that buzz in your lips. In a tube, it's gonna sound a little bit different. And you know, it's just slowly bringing those lips together, getting that pressure through and getting the vibration. With a reed, this is what that's gonna sound like. Just to get that initial sound out of it, you throw that in on a bugle. So you're gonna go through that, get the voice sound, inflection, increase your tongue pressure, pressure on the reed, and then slowly bring those lips together and get that vibration down in the tube. And that's what a lip ball is. Where, and you can get, you can start off a bugle with it. You can increase the intensity as that uh, in a calling situation, but it's a pretty simple sound once you get that buzz of your lips figured out. So, just a couple other tricks to get that lip ball. One trick you can use is to, to use a little bit of pressure up or down on your lips or to the side, left or right. It'll kind of just trap it enough to where those your lips can uh, start to make that buzz sound. Another thing you can do is you can trim your call down just a little bit. Um, so his is all the way widened out. I like to trim mine down just a little bit and it helps me get that lip ball a little bit easier because I can purse my lips against the side of it a little easier. Uh, just a couple little techniques to get it, get that going for you. So it's, it's kind of an advanced call. It took me a couple hours in a Toyota pickup with uh, Cody. He taught me how to do it. And uh, once you get it, it's like riding a bike. So why would we want to use the lip ball, guys? Is it just a, is it kind of a power play? I think that once you get the bull inside and let's say he won't commit, he won't cut that extra 100 yards, a lot of times you'll hear the bull ramp it up when he gets tight but he can't see you uh, and, and you're trying to figure out how to get him to close. When you get in a fight, let's say, with someone, your your body language changes, uh, your voice raises, that is when a lip ball comes into play. And so it's adding that whole emotion state of calling and that's really what, what it is. I don't know that elk have a specific language, but the intensity, duration, some of those factors, that's where that lip ball, just like it says, it kind of amps everything up. It's that next level of the bugle. That's yeah. that's where to introduce that is when you're invoking that fighting. He sounds mad. The next sound that we talk about is probably, I think one of the more difficult of all to sound realistic. And this is where I would say breaks the, that's a hunter versus that's a bull. And that's the chuckle. The Doug uh, Flutie's. The Doug Flutie's of the world, yeah. But the biggest thing with the chuckle is gonna be cadence and the duration of it. Uh, a lot of times when you hear a hunter chuckle, it's pew, 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 pew and it's very short, it falls off very fast, and if you get the chuckle down right, you're gonna have that in and out, in and out, in and out airflow. You should be able to chuckle for a minute continuously straight. And that's basically, what you're gonna do is, it's an exaggerated cow call sound where you bring your tongue pressure up, let off, bring that voice inflection, you're gonna bring air back in your mouth at that point, 
In and out, in and out, in and out. That's just the exaggerated in and out sound of it. Where you get the real chuckle is getting that hollow air, uh, the bass sound of it, right? What I like to, to tell people is, is think of like a gorilla. Um, you want like going, <gasps> kind of making that, that sound from like your diaphragm. Mm -hmm. and, and that gives you that inflection that sounds more realistic than, <gasps> you know? And so you need to get that, <gasps> in your voice when you're doing it. So, <coughs> cow call, chuckle. <coughs> so it's, <coughs> you're just making it, giving it that guttural sound to and make I, it sound real. Yeah, and I think the big thing and the hardest is getting that air exchange in and out. That's the, probably the, and yep. reed placement, right, is as you're exchanging air, keeping pressure where that reed's not moving, floating in your mouth. Otherwise uh, you might eat the Yeah, call. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've got a bull from a couple hunts way back in the day. If you guys have seen Born and Raised way before the first land of the free, uh, we got some stuff uh, with Trevor and I back hunting Roosevelt's Rut Creek Bull last week in the season, mm. and uh, another bull uh, hunting on the east side of the state. Okay guys, finally we have the last couple for you. We got a challenge bugle and a bark scream. Um, this is like in the heat of the moment when you're trying, you've tried everything else and you just can't get them to close and this can be uh, a game changer. Yeah, so like we talk about calling elk, the real side of it, it's all based on the emotion side of it. And this is where that bull's coming in, you're gonna cut him off, you're gonna challenge him, I'm here to fight and that it's basically what you're gonna take is all these sounds we've talked about. You're gonna have a, a high-pitched lip ball bugle with emotion. You're gonna grab that chuckle at the end of it and just, it's when you're mad, right? Yeah, and uh, this goes from, you know, anywhere we've done the location bugle where it's doo -doo 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 -doo. This is like, bah! You're <laughs> screaming. Yeah, you, you are, this is it, the bar fight. This is this the one, moments before the bar fight happens. Literally the, the collar at this point, when you're doing the bark scream challenge bugle, you are exhausted at the end of this. Yeah. You are giving everything you've got. Yep. It's just basically super aggressive. So just like. <laughs> So really loud, really scream-like, <laughs> um, with a lot of chuckles at the end. You're just trying to say, hey, I'm right here, I'm not going any further, you, you need to show yourself. And uh, usually when this happens, you are less than 100 yards apart, and you just literally need them to take just a few more steps to get it done. And at the moment, a lot of times, if that bull's doing the same thing as when you're calling over the top, you're challenging him, you're cutting him off, and, and we, last year it worked like a charm. We, we call it the copycat game. So no one likes to have a copycat repeat everything they say, neither do bull elk. L last year, calling in Cody's elk, it came all the way in, uh, and then it was right out of bow range, and every single time he would fire off, I would just try to sound exactly like him. And we'll show you some of that tape right now, uh, so you can kind of get an idea of how that worked. You've played the challenge bugle, that bull's hung up. He's come as far as he is. A lot of times you'll hear a bull bark at you and you're like, oh, gig's up. Well, not necessarily. What he's looking for is show yourself. And if you challenge him back with a bark chuckle, bark scream combination, a lot of times that will convince him like, all right, no, you are real. It's just that next level. But usually it's the last card straw, that bull's hung up. He's not breaking that distance, and this is where it's like the next level of challenge scenario. I want to see you. Um, so that sound, super sharp, short grunt, essentially, followed by either a scream or chuckles, and we've had both bulls do it both ways. This is what that's gonna sound like. <laughs> or they'll follow it up with a bark and then a long series of chuckles. 
So guys, we're gonna show you one in New Mexico where the bark scream worked really well. Finally, the bark chuckle, uh, it actually had come in, it had seen us and spooked, and it barked uh, and chuckled on its way out. It ran towards the bull and bark chuckled and stopped him. And after about 15 minutes, it kept up his curiosity where he wasn't sure what he had seen, and he actually turned and we got the job done. So uh, the gig's not always up. The bark chuckle or bark scream can be a game changer to get it done, even if you think uh, you, you've lost an opportunity. Hope this helps guys. This has been the bugling series. I think the boys have some more stuff for uh, cow sounds, but uh, really appreciate you guys watching. Okay, so we've covered calf sounds all the way through cow sounds, all the way through bugles, all the way through chuckles, all the way through everything. And I hope you guys have liked this so far, but the final destination that you guys are headed to is killing an elk, right? Yes. And it's sounding real like an elk. We have a lot of times, and I'm not saying a lot, but there has been times we've called elk in without saying a word. And that's with us, our whole team traipsing through the forest. Yeah. Breaking sticks. Breaking, breaking sticks, brush. acting <clears throat> like elk, acting like real yeah. elk do. And elk are big, heavy animals, and they make noise. And they're curious as well. Yeah. So sometimes they will actually come to just you breaking some stuff yep. or raking a tree. So Steve, like in a normal calling situation, guys, this is our normal calling situation. It's not gonna be just like this and and taking a, you know, a limb and, and breaking a limb or it's not gonna be like that at all. Can you give us just a real, just like a, a quick description, like if you're gonna make a rub on that huckleberry, Steve, what would you do in a calling scenario? So it would be, it's, you're not gonna be, yeah. elk bulls are big, so they're gonna be. So, okay, so say in the scenario, Steve's raking like here, right where he was just now, right? And so Trevor's the shooter, which we try not to do that very often, but sometimes it has to happen because he has a tag. So let's say Trevor's the shooter and he's down and Steve can see him visually barely through the trees. Steve's gonna look at Trevor and Trevor can probably see the bull possibly if he's hung up or if he's coming in and maybe the bull starts to circle around this way. Trevor is going to say behind his back point in any direction that he wants Steve to go. Steve is going to leave post yeah, and move and take off and, and hopefully he can still see Trevor. So he will run maybe 20, maybe 30 yards and start beating up another tree and the, and the the significance to that is watching that bull and making that bull try to hook in and come straight to Steve. He wants him to be directly in between the shooter and the elk, right? So that's the whole scenario here. So like Steve will make all the noise he can, looking at every stick, looking on the ground, breaking brush, making noise, thumping a root, whatever he can. As you're moving away from the shooter, and so what he's trying to do is just trying to make a greater distance in between that bull so that bull just keeps coming and keeps coming. So in this scenario with the raking, with the collar scenario is, we call it the dance, right? It's a dance of you and that elk trying to push his buttons to where he comes at you. The biggest thing that you want in between you and him is your shooter. Think about direction and think about wind at the same time when you're trying to get that, that perfect shot for that shooter at a close range. So there's a reason that we all like to hunt together. It isn't because we like each other by any means of the word. It is, <laughs> it's because we do so well as a team. Yeah. And I would rather hunt with a bunch of people uh, in a calling scenario than just like one or two guys, yeah. just because you can make so much more noise. You can act like a herd. There's so many times on film and you'll, you'll hear this in just a second of like a real herd noise. And when a real herd is doing their real thing and they're not spooked, it is loud. Yeah. It is very, Making very loud. a lot of noise. A lot of noise. Yeah, they're huge animals. So, yeah. So we will spread out. We'll sometimes have two collars staged. We'll sometimes be, I mean, everything is hand signals too. So the biggest thing with hand signals that we have is we try to let, have the collar be able to see the shooter. Or the, you know, and the cameraman is right by the shooter. So you can see both people down there or over there or across there. And so you're getting, you're, you're getting your, your notes from them. So they're gonna say either cow call, this is our cow call sign, or they're gonna say bugle. And so they can see that bull, they can see what he's liking or disliking. And so they're gonna try to talk to that caller back there that hopefully has a visual with them and tell them what to do.
So the one thing that we don't want to do is we don't want to make the exact same cow sound every single time, which would be like We want to mix it up, add more sound to it, like a whole herd of cows or multiple cows and calves moving around through the hillside or in the woods or wherever you may be hunting the train you might be in. So now we're going to go to all kinds of cows. And at that time, breaking sticks, making noise, sounding like elk. So, as you notice, like in that little last scenario, it's not just one person going and one spot directing. It's turning your hands, turning your tones, turning your body, beating up a tree from one angle, beating up a tree from another angle, bugling this way, bugling that way. So it's a real live elk sounds instead of just the one directional going like that. You're, you're, you're broadcasting everything. It just sounds so much more realistic. Elk Week's all about helping you guys get a bull on the ground as we stated earlier. And uh, part of that's gonna be, we are going to be doing an uh, a throwback uncut uh, like we did in the first land of the free series that you guys loved we're going to be answering any questions that you guys might have so leave a comment below just whatever comes to mind anything that you're thinking of to help you this season kill an elk and uh, we're going to try to answer all those questions as much as we can yeah we'd love to have you make a comment down below and uh, we'll, we'll see if we can get try our board. best because yeah. <laughs> if we've made a mistake chances are we can hopefully save you from making the same mistake down the road. Yeah. So hit the comment section, like I said. We'll do our best at trying to answer it for you. Every single day for this whole week, it's gonna be an action-packed week. So it's not gonna be the one night a week family time. It's gonna be every night family time. So grab the family, get in front of the, uh, the television, in front of the YouTube, check it out. The cool thing is, is we're doing giveaways every single day and we've got some big ticket items. We've got bows, we've got deck systems, we've got exo packs, we've got SIG, SIG packages, binoculars. we've got first light packages. We've got a lot of Onyx. stuff. Wow. Onyx memberships, possibly a lifetime. Uh, yeah, big time stuff guys that we're giving away. So be sure and get in on those giveaways and tune into the uncuts right after the show. And that's when we're gonna announce all the giveaways. We're gonna talk yep. about questions. We're gonna uh, kind of review the day before as well. So, so that's when the magic happens. If you missed it before, text Elk Week to 541-256-2457 and uh, get your name in the hat. Hopefully we're gonna pick you to win some gear. Give him the thunder. Is Noah ready? Noah, are you recording yet? Yeah. <laughs> I had to get that dirty stash in here. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting on a chair. <laughs> Guys, it is super exciting. This week is Elk Week. We've never done anything like this. We're back in the uncut studios, looking at the brick walls again. It's been kind, it's, of, a, it's, kind of a throwback. Yeah, I know. I think the good thing is we're back to you and us, you know, hanging out. So, uh, yeah, I think the cool thing is Elk Week. We had this idea and all of a sudden it kind of came to fruition, doing a bunch of videos every night. What are we gonna do this week? What, how many videos? So or what, we got five videos. videos. So we had Calling that you're watching tonight. Uh, tomorrow's Gear Dump. We go through back country to the front country. Then we go into shot angles, talking about uh, the frontal, the broadside, quartering way, all those uh, shots on elk, where to play scenario. Then you go into the do's and don'ts. And that's kind of our mistakes that we've made over the years. Here's some things that you don't wanna do and here's some things that you might wanna do. Followed with 20 bulls, 20 minutes, 20 kills. Pretty crazy. Topping it off. Topping it off. So what we wanted to do with these uncuts too, and, and we've done them with Land of the Free in the past, is we want to like hear from you guys. That's the big thing here is like hear from you guys what could help you this elk season. So that's what this whole week is about, is to gain hype for the our favorite thing that yeah we do. yeah the month of september chasing bulls um so hit the comment section below through all these videos throughout this week we'll be uh jumping through reading those pulling questions uh hitting some of our favorite ones giving shout outs anything like that um that's what this week's all about just having fun celebrating the elk season upcoming 
hundred percent hundred percent so along with everything that we just talked about with all the videos that we're gonna put out we're gonna do daily giveaways as well so every single episode there will be a giveaway and how do they get in or in the giveaway so you text elk week to 541-256-2457 you gotta only do that once so you'll be entered for these five videos uh, you do it one time you're good to go um, we got tons of gear so first up call co we got the uh, Cat Road Shuffle package. So and that'll be to one of you watching this video. That, yeah. will, that will go, this will, all those, all the calls. We'll announce tomorrow, but you got a bomb bugle tube. You're gonna get a sound bite. You're gonna get our uh, new call pouch, stuff full of all of our seven arc frames. So, uh, and a set of meat bags, so. Yes, a whole set of meat bags. Uh, they're so limited that we don't even have any actually on yeah. set. So, but, uh, but so we'll get those. That, that'll be the first giveaway we're gonna announce tomorrow. Uh, next up, you're gonna have gear dumps. So we've got an XO Bro 4800 pack, and the second winner is gonna be a decked system. So for the back of your pickup, the whole thing. Pretty awesome. That's a huge giveaway. Yeah. Followed Wednesday, we're giving away a Hoyt Venom Pro, and then Thursday we've got Onyx. Onyx memberships, Elite memberships, um, and was there any more? Six hour. Sig's gonna bring it in with uh, some Zulu sixes as well. So, so Im Im image stabilizing binoculars. So big week, big yeah, giveaway week. Yeah, the last one too. Another Cat Road Shuffle and meat bags on Friday. So yeah. we so, wanna prepare you guys for elk season with all this content, all the gear kind of giveaways. Um, it's kind of, I don't know, I'm, I'm nervous back to an uncut. It's like we're- A little different, yeah, a little different. Out yeah. of the realm of what we've- Trying to create value, right? And yeah. just trying to like, usually we have, uh, Mary Jo sends in, da da da, and so we can read something. Right now we're off the cuff, we're out of our element. Yeah, so I think the big part for us, like I said, ask as many questions, anything we can help there. Um, to, to, as you're watching this video, we'll put the link in the description. We're doing an Onyx seminar live tomorrow on Tuesday the 19th, oh, yeah. so you can, register to that um i think it's unlimited seats but yes basically we've been doing a seminar tour um here in oregon uh we actually have one in washington later this week at bob's up in longview on thursday night um so if you're in that area come hang out in bob's at 6 p.m we're gonna do a seminar there too so the big thing it's like kind of a cool grassroots get to talk to people you know we put these videos up but we don't always get to see the faces behind the viewers so so the big thing, last but not least, the big thing guys is we're gonna do this next year, but what we're gonna do is prep you guys for next year, give you guys the tools, and you guys are gonna go out, whoever wants to, and go film your own hunts, and we are gonna post them on our channel. Yep, so Elk Week next year is, it's a film contest. We're gonna accept, I, I, we're not sure, if three to five to seven. 30 uh, to 50 to 70. A bunch of videos. Um, and so we'll put the link in the description, you guys, if you're an aspiring filmmaker or a longtime filmmaker, and want to share some elk content with some of our viewers, uh, hit that link, check it out. Um, you got all season to make that happen and get us a video by next spring, so. Be awesome, so if you were like we were back in the day and really wanting to, you know, do something and show people what you guys are doing, this would be a great thing and a, and a platform to do it on, so. Super excited to see some of those yeah. submissions it's, come through. It's, uh, I don't know, with my previous career doing the Full Draw Film Tour, it's like this, fun, exciting, seeing the up and comers and yeah. all that. So we want to be able to share your vision with our audience. Perfect. So that just about caps it off. Tons of giveaways, tons of videos coming out this week. Hopefully tons of value to you guys and um, just appreciate all the support that you guys give us. And I can't wait for tomorrow's videos. Get those questions down and hopefully we can answer some. All right. See you guys tomorrow.